<coughs> Excuse me again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks. Uh, adequate notice of this uh, November the 14th, 2013 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. By posting written notice and agenda of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building 1000 Route 10, Whippin East Township of Hanover, by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers the Hanover Eagle, Morris County's Daily Record, and the Star Ledger, by filing same with the Township Clerk. I have a roll call, please. Committee Man Schleicher. Here. Sure. Committee Man Faramoska. Here. Committee Man Bruno. Here. Committee Man Capola is having a colonoscopy tomorrow. He wanted everybody to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and he has an excused absence. TMI. Mr. Too much Mancioli. information. He's here. <laughs> Do we really have to describe that? I mean, he did want the he, members he, of the Township he, Committee and the public well. to know that. <laughs> All members the best. In George, George so. we... All the best uh, Mr. Capola. <laughs> We gave a uh, good detail of what you're going to go through. Um, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please join me, those that might, and to be able to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Before we begin and before we open, we have a proclamation uh, that we, as a township committee, have offered uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, this is a proclamation of the township committee declaring the month of November as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Hanover Township. Um, as most uh, may know, this is a dreaded disease uh, and uh, very limited in cure, and uh, we're hoping much more can be done about it in the future. But for now, Joe, we have a resolution, and by the way, I'll offer it. Yes, the proclamation of the Township Committee declaring the month of November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Hanover Township. We have a motion by the mayor. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Schleifer and also Mr. Bruno. And on roll call, Mr. Schleifer, Aye. Mr. Faramaska, Aye. Mr. Bruno, Aye. and Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. Is there anyone present from the Pancreatic Cancer Society president? I don't believe there is. <clears throat> so we'll make sure to get this to them. Okay. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public. So uh, a motion to open. So moved. Second. All in, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If you'd like to address the township committee at this time, you can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Hi, Robert. Hello. Uh, Robert Steiger, 13 Quarter Place, Cedar Knowles, Mayor, members of the committee, Joe. Uh, I have some happy stuff and some not so happy stuff. The happy stuff is I went shopping this morning in Disney World. I went to the new <laughs> shop right. You, it you is were absolutely, <laughs> it's magnificent. It, it is so great. I got lost. I bumped into a young fellow with a uniform and I said, can you tell me where I can find the Snapple? He whipped out a cell phone, said information, we're looking for Snapple. Aisle 8 East, not West, Aisle 8 East. It, it took me 15 minutes to get to the aisle, but it was spectacular. It, re it really is. Now that, that that was an easy site plan to put through. There's no question about that. <laughs> Bear is also magnificent. I don't know who is responsible for bringing them here, but it is absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> and I'm sure that Weg Weglins or Wegmans is going to also be very good. Heard now, much, yeah. Heard I'm sorry. Much Cali yesterday. Yeah. Right. But the Burlex <laughs> site could have used a little imagination. I mean, another quick check, oh my goodness gracious. They couldn't come up with anything besides a quick check on the corner. That shows little or no imagination as far as the planning board goes. But then again, I came to Tuesday night's planning board meeting, and I'll be honest with you, this planning board has no imagination whatsoever, Ron. When they presented that Whippany Road site, with the, and Gene Penadella said they had the housing down from 400 to 340, and he was content with that. That scared the hell out of you, me. You heard me. I heard you. I didn't hear another board member say a word, though. <clears throat> that, and that scared me. It really, they sat like bobblehead dolls. They didn't do a thing. And I'm serious. That was a time, if you've got an applicant and you're going to 
not tell him what you want at that time. That's the time to do it. Then he'll <laughs> make up a plan, come in, and then they tear him apart after he's put it together. That was terribly wrong. It really was. Gene was only concerned that there wasn't enough retail on the site. He really was on that office building. That was very disappointing. Uh, I understand too also that uh, there's talk of putting some housing on the Eden, uh, Eden, old Eden Mill site. There's somebody is interested oh, in yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I do believe that the planning board is not strong enough to handle these, ap <laughs> these, appli uh, these applicants that come in. <laughs> I think the only way that these sites can be controlled is by the township committee, not rezoning anything for mixed use until they present a site plan that you're comfortable with, that you think the town is comfortable with, then you can rezone it. <laughs> Morris Township did, did that. They rezoned the, the, the old uh, site too soon. They put in the housing. The major company walked away, and they're stuck with all of that housing. It's, uh, it, it, I'm kind of, I think it's one of the weakest planning boards that I, in the 40 <laughs> years I've been involved, they don't seem to have, all they do is seem to react to site plans that come in. And I, I'm serious, and I speak to you, Bob, I speak to George, and I speak, Ron and, and John know, and I speak to Ace. Don't rezone, don't give up on the house, any mixed use until you see a plan that you're happy with, please. Because if you do, and, and you rezone it, the plan, you have no control again over what the planning board does. I know Ron and John will be firm, but that planning board, they just seem to rubber stamp whatever comes along. It's, it was very disappointing. Uh, other than that, that's about, oh, a Whippany Village. I was also a little disappointed when the board had an opportunity to look into the, to the housing on that site that night. That there was even a, a, a member of the neighborhood here who was concerned about it. And when, this, when the chairman said to the board, does anybody have any question, they didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, these things, the public is concerned about these things, but the board seems to be oblivious of, of what the town is concerned about. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you try, Ron, and I, I know John has his heart into it, but the board just seems to not follow any of your leads. And I just hope that the mm -hmm. committee will take the stand and control it. Don't let them control you, please. I'd appreciate that. Thank, thank you, thank Bob. You. No, thank you. Um, there's no doubt, and uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to uh, take a position from this podium that, uh, that, that this township committee is all things, Bob, because you know we have to operate with our boards, with our planning boards, etc. cetera. Um, I, I think, uh, and, and I hear you, I, I do, but I think the, uh, the thing to understand, too, and, uh, is that both River Park, and you're right, they came in with a large... Uh, layout from Amy News property of uh, housing, etc. Rentals. Rental seems to be the market now. It's hot thing. You know, remember office buildings were hot, and then flex buildings were hot. Now rentals are hot. You don't zone by market conditions. Um, but that being said, these are concepts. No application fees were paid. No formal plans have come in, and and uh, I'd like to not waste everybody's time. And uh, I think we made it abundantly clear that particular night to uh, 67 Whippany LLC, which is the South Campus, that uh, we were dissatisfied with the one particular element of his whole plan, that's the housing element. Uh, they always come in for the whole enchilada, and they know damn well that we're gonna bargain them back but you know what? We're going to bargain them down, not just back. Um, I think we, we have a good sense of, uh, of what the community's feelings are, right, wrong, or indifferent, perceived or not perceived, and that is housing and traffic. And um, uh, the, uh, the housing aspect of it, this committee, you're right. If, if something is wrong, we have, we're, we're representing uh, our township right up here. We are the firewall. We're the firewall. And I think we know that, each and every one of us. Uh, some of us have very, very strong feelings about no housing, uh, continuation of housing in the township. Um, 
But nevertheless, to answer your, to specific, not to go on, but specifically answer your question, uh, let's see what the planning board flushes out. I appreciate your sentiment on that. Let's see where they go with this river. River Park didn't come in yet, right? That's coming in for a concept. Concept came in for River Park, and so that everybody understands there has been some precedent with River Park. And the River Park issue is there was a court order settlement. And when that concept plan came in front of the planning board, the planning board made it very clear at, that the court ordered settlement is far more closer to what the expectation is. You remember that. Planning standpoint. Yeah. And in addition to that court ordered settlement, <coughs> there's a requirement. And it's the same requirement that the planning board spoke <coughs> about to the uh, South Campus group, which came in here, in terms of traffic management. We need to see a traffic management plan. So in case of River Park, what we said very clearly was, we want to see how the cars that you're proposing uh, within the court ordered settlement would get to Route 10. Because we don't envision seeing you building bridges and things to deposit these cars onto Eden Lane. Eden Lane we consider to be a local residential roadway and we're not interested in seeing that becoming overwhelmed by traffic. So that applicant heard it loud and clear as to what the expectation was, as well as the applicant with the South Campus has got to come in here and address density, has got to come in here and address traffic management because there are two major issues that we're dealing with today and we're going to be dealing with in the future. Um, and we are going to be working those two aspects very hard. I, I appreciate that. The only thing that concerns me is I've served with Gene Finadella for over 30 years. He has always been the staunchest, most conservative. He voted down a, a house on Troy Hills Road because they wanted to put two houses on this on a, a block. The guy went to court and won. That was one house he was opposed to. Now, all of a sudden, the other night, he wasn't upset with 340 apartments. That scared the hell out of me. It really did, because that's coming from a guy that the board uh, uh, looks up to. He's, he's been kind of the backbone of that board. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, that really scares me. And you mentioned something about COA the other night. I was just wondering, uh, on the... Uh, Meatpacking, uh, how many affordable units does do they have to put up on that one? On the... Uh, on the, on the meatpacking. Yeah, on the 15 units that he's putting up there. Uh, where are you? Uh, I'm looking down here at that place. The, the, the COA component, is he going to pay the 2% or is he going to do the 20% on the uh, affordables? On that, the, the housing that's going to go on there, where are you? Bob's question is, what, what's, his ob what's his obligation on COA on those housings? Oh. The treatment, the, the, the meatpacking plant. Jefferson Road. Jefferson Road. Road. It's a residential development fee. He'd be paying the fee. He's, he's paying the fee. He's pay paying a fee based upon the value of the homes. So he's going to do the 2%? Uh, it's not 2. I think it's 1.5. One 1.5. One on Whatever the formula is for the value of his housing, he has to pay into our COA fund. So if that's it, you're saying it's 1.5%. So that'll be in the developer's agreement that way. But then how about the uh, Whippany Village? Couldn't he do the same thing? Uh, he, he now can do the same thing. No, uh, he can't. Huh? He would have to, he has to build affordable housing on site. Why? Because that's the way the ordinance reads. Yeah, but the, the latest um, ordinance that you sent to me just recently on the commercial properties. We understand the commercial properties, the formula for commercial properties, everybody pays color. Right. But um, did you not in that ordinance say that there, the, the, ob the, there's no obligation on that? You could pay the 2%? What was the language you gave you know, me on the, that? The, the state passed a law, in the municipal land use law, that says towns in their zoning ordinances cannot impose an affordable housing obligation other than the fee on non-residential development. We can't impose it on residential right. development. So under, the, under Bob's question now, you say, but it's already in the ordinance, so therefore I'm your whole... I'm talking about our ordinance, yeah. our local so, ordinance. So on that basis, you're saying you want the housing versus the, the percentage. The obligation we're imposing in the case, in the, the state law says you, in a mixed-use development where you have both housing and non-residential development, you can't impose an obligation on the non-residential portion. 
You can, however, impose it on the residential portion. And that's what the zone does. Sounds to me like you could impose it on him and, he w and you'd get more money into your COA bank. No. What, what I'm saying is we can make him build affordable units. We could also make him do a fee, but all that the fee does, it gives us money that we then have to spend to build affordable housing elsewhere. So, and it's not enough money to build affordable housing elsewhere because it's based upon the value of the units. For a typical single family home, you get about, uh, I'm gonna say four to 5,000, is that right, Silvio? Yeah, around four to 5,000. All right, that, and, and there we're talking apartments, uh, so it'd even be less. It'd probably be more in the range of 3,000 uh, that we would get. And if you build five homes and you have to provide affordable housing, you're only getting $15,000 in those five homes. That's nowhere near enough money. Ma Mayor, who's calling the shots here? You or Blaze? No, I'm serious when you, I say that. Every time, we sat, every time we sat, it was the same thing. He, tries to, he calls the shots. Where the hell is he coming from? Ron, you, want, you, you know what's best the for the town. Just, just do <laughs> what's best for the town. The, 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 uh, Blaze knows my opinion on the Council of Affordable Housing. I uh, shared that with the good governor a little while ago. Uh, I think I share the same feelings the good governor has on Council of Affordable Housing. Uh, I, I think I, I think that with the Township Committee uh, has got to take a more serious role in yes. what options we're going to take with COA. I agree with you. Uh, forgive me for choosing my words here. I've got to be very careful about right. what I'm committing to. But nevertheless, nevertheless, whatever these options are, we can't escape COA. I mean, we looked at every town, we looked at Madison, we looked at, when we looked at the numbers that are still on our COA list, some 660 still that, would, that, we, have to just, that we have to justify, uh, and I looked at the other towns, there's some even more than us, but we're all caught in that same COA business uh, from 30 years ago. But Judy. Hi, Ju <coughs> Judy Iratti, 43 Locust Drive, Morris Plains. Like it's in the, yeah, in the Cedar Knoll section of um, Hanover Township. Mm -hmm. um, I, I missed the number of COA units that the Whippany Village um, would be required to build. Nine. Nine? Nine. So in that instance, um, mm -hmm. nine COA units versus the percentage of money he'd have to pay into a fund so that you could build co the, those nine units someplace else in town. Now, I know that you said that the Township Committee... Um, <coughs> likes to hear from the people, and um, do you, don't you think that the people might want to subsidize those nine uh, COA units, um, even with our tax money, I hate to say it, rather than have 46 rentals built there? 46 rentals? We'll be stuck but, with 46 rentals. What, what is your thought on how, let's take that scenario out, mm -hmm. how the nine that we're obligated to mm -hmm. from that, and by the mm -hmm. way, it's not our, the builder's obligation, but those nine, mm -hmm and he pays us the percentage, then you're saying that we, we build the, not, the township takes responsibility to build the nine COA units somewhere else. Right, not, like we do with every other commercial. And, and not build the market units. With it, right, with every other commercial um, building in town, you'd get the uh, money in lieu of the building of the houses, most of them. And, and by the way, this nine units is just, may never come to fruition because COA has not actually set the, um, the amount of housing that we need to do. Mm -hmm. But we'd have a, the money to put away into a fund to build towards the nine units. And um, maybe in the future when we do, when something else comes up, a residential housing um, plan comes up, we could actually fit those nine units into that plan rather than have 46. I mean, to tell you the truth, to me, it looks no, like no, now a strip no, mall no, with no, strip mall with rentals that, on top of it. That's the trick. That's the game. Right. How do how do we satisfy this COA 20 mm -hmm. 20 22 percent 20 percent component without having to build the market? How right. do we how do we pay for for that that percentage? That's mm -hmm. that's the that's the balance here. Yeah. And heretofore, we've we've used an integrated process, mm -hmm. uh, inclusionary, right. so that when a developer built. Uh, somebody came up with this formula of five to one that said, mm -hmm. hey, for every five markets mm -hmm. he builds, uh, he can build a COA unit and, and sell it for a lower mm -hmm. COA price. So that, that's, one would, one would have to say this, 
this 2% or or whatever we're going to get here, uh, what is that against the market value of the commercial property, and does that 2% cover the cost of a COA unit, you know, or, or nine or whatever they are? That's that's where this committee is. That's this that's the game here. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we'd rather build. You know, mm -hmm. we'd rather build none of them. And I I, could, mm -hmm. I think I could speak openly <laughs> on that one. Um, well, with collecting the fee for this, because we don't ha have another mixed use like this in town where we have residential and commercial together, but collecting the commercial fee for the co-housing and setting that aside. Uh, I know there was even a time when they allowed you to take the money and transfer it over to another town so that they could, uh, that had all the infrastructure we there. We were able to do that at one point. Mm -hmm. we they were might do that again in the f near future. I mean, I, so. I hope, yeah. Oh, no, no, if they, that was the, uh, that was the I best. applauded that. That mm -hmm. was great. And mm -hmm. matter of fact, not only was it good for us, right. it was good for sure. the oranges where we bought sure. them. I think we bought them in, in the oranges. Right. They they liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, if you drive through the oranges and you drive down right. Bloomfield Avenue, as I had to do recently once through Bloomfield and through Montclair, etc., sure. and you see what's being built right. with transferred money mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. co uh, co dollars, mm -hmm. phenomenal, and mm -hmm. and it's great. Um, does it satisfy the co mission of of um, uh, spreading the um, housing? Availability throughout this state for every one of us, and low income and high income. That, that's that's uh, Coa's mm -hmm. principle through Mount Laurel is that you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't seen the results of it here in Hanover, and I don't think you have. Mm -hmm. So that's beside the point. But as I'm saying, is there's a, a, another option for building this Coa housing, and um, if you pass the Whippany Village um, ordinance allowing the Coa units and the other you know, 46 units together, like I said, it's a strip, all it is is a strip mall with rentals on top. If you do pass the ordinance, uh, the builder most likely will jump on it, and that's what we'll be left with, and tomorrow they could co cook back and say, well, oh, guess what, now today you're able to transfer your funds to another town, and we'd be stuck with the 46 so, housing. So units. what you're saying is, hey, bank it, and, and bank let's it. see what falls out in five months when the governor has to come, come up with some new ideas or, uh, yeah. or at the same time, uh, good Governor Christie uh, come up with some new judges. Um, yes. But uh, yes. in either case, um, in either case, uh, mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you on okay. that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I know that Hanover doesn't want to go in the real estate business. We don't want to be responsible mm -hmm. for it. Matter of fact, the most, the latest um, comment from the Township Committee, from a policy standpoint, that we want in developers' agreements is that hey, developer, you want to come into Hanover and you want to do something, whatever the outcome of COA five months from now or now is, you're responsible for it. Right. We don't, we don't want to get caught like we caught years ago where we got retroed mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Grande. And uh, a guy comes in, builds 160 units, and, and then we, we wake up in June and COA says, oh, by the way, we're retroing your obligation mm -hmm. back to January 1, and we got hurt by that. That was significant. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to let that happen. Uh, so builders that don't want to come in under those conditions, they'll go away. Mm -hmm. And if they do want to come into those conditions and they want to give us the 2% on the commercial, as Blaze is just saying, or whatever the formula will be for the percentage, I haven't discussed this in fully with the Township Committee, but my mm -hmm. opinion is take their money. Yeah. Put it, okay, put, you know, and, and if COA says, hey, Hanover, like they threatened mm -hmm. you over your $800,000 mm -hmm. right. not too long ago, we're going to go and take your money. Yeah. It's not your money. Mm -hmm. It's not the taxpayer's money. Mm -hmm. So take our money. So you see, we do agree on something. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, that, that's, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox now. That okay, thank it. you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Barb. <laughs> Oh, good. Share. Down um, I'll take and, uh, kind of interesting that. Uh, guys got a couple of these. Right. Yeah, Barbara Ames, uh, Six Cove Lane Road. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting that uh, the other two spoke people who spoke uh, tonight um, about the issues you, and you've been discussing and what I was going to bring up to you. I could kind of put them all under the same umbrella. And it's talking about 
influence from higher levels of government telling us what we're going to do with our town. And uh, it's not good. Um, what I gave to you, uh, one piece of history there that I thought you might be interested in, the, the, the graph of the figures of open space, it's from, um, uh, you know, the spring when I put those figures together in my freeholder race. And you, if your eyes go to Hanover Township first, you'll notice that Hanover Township has paid in 17 million in open space funds and gotten two back. And you'll notice that a number of other towns are in our situation. Look at the figure for Parsippany. Now, Parsippany is a big town, I know it, but um, they are out $30 million in, in taxes they have paid and less than they've, they've gotten back. That's the difference. There are some towns that are big beneficiaries. You'll notice that they're in the positive column, Booton Township, Washington Township, I think Mount Olive, some of the, out, the more outlying towns. I was at the uh, freeholders meeting yesterday and they introduced, um, uh, they did it, they, uh, Dina Leary talked about open space and the, and the proposed uh, uh, acquisitions for this year. There's only three, interestingly enough, um, but one of them was for Harding Township. Harding Township is a town that's done pretty nicely. Harding Township that's a, has that's a, a nice. That's a nice number, isn't it? Harding, yeah. Well, yes, it is. That's how much more they've, they're, you know, they've benefited by nine million more than they've put in. I think the figure is there. Um, and they have a lot of open space out there, and they have money in their open space fund. Uh, John Crick has brought up that he thought that funding at 75 percent county open space was too much, considering the money they have and the open space they already have. Mm -mm the money the folks have up there, they could buy their own open space. I don't know. Whatever. Um, there's a lot of inequity that's going on there. The, the, the comment I just made at the, at the uh, Fairholder meeting was, when you're looking to give out grants, you might kind of look at the counties, the towns that are really losers. Hanover Township's one of them. And David Scapiccio said to me, well, those towns could apply for grants, couldn't they? I said, yeah, but you know what? A lot of the towns in the center of the county, we don't have that much more open space anymore to buy if we wanted to, as opposed to the Washington townships and the Mount Olives where he lives. And the, oh, yeah, the Mendham. Who, who is it we know who lives in Mendham? Oh, there's some big guy who lives out there. Mendham's done pretty well, you notice, for open space, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it's, it's dis redistribution of wealth. That's what it is, and when you give somebody else the money and the power, you probably don't get a significant part of it back. So that's just kind of history, but I thought you might be interested. I don't know that you actually ever saw those figures from me in the spring. Um, <clears throat> the other two issues, uh, the other two pieces that I gave you are about Common Core, and I don't know whether you're following that, and I think uh, Many of you are in my age group where our kids are through school, but um, this is coming down. Think Obamacare for education. Mm, how's that working out this week at the, down in Washington? Not too well. So this is Obama, they're calling it affectionately Obama Core, and it is being implemented in all our schools across the state. Um, if you followed the news in New York State, uh, yeah, they're having a lot of pushback there from, from residents. There have been big hearings with multiple hundreds of parents who were angry and upset. They had, they gave, the, they were about a year ahead of us in implementation. They gave the tests in the spring, 34% of the kids passed. And so that's why parents are upset. There's a lot of other um, disturbing things about Common Core, including data mining, which is illegal, but they've figured out a way to get around it. Um, biometric testing of kids to see their eyes, whether they're stressed out, uh, cushions to see whether they're, they're fidgety while they're taking it, uh, something on the mouse to determine the pressure they're using on the mouse. A lot of invasion of privacy. Um, there is an issue, there is a pushback going on across the state, across the nation, really. A number of states have pulled out of Common Core. Um, I did go to the school board meeting. East was there when I, when I spoke about it a, about a month ago. And uh, I think he's the only, uh, credit, you, you're the only one that's even called me back and asked a question about it, which makes me wonder whether anybody read it, because if you read that, I think you might have maybe a question or two you'd might like to ask about what's happening. Um, Scott Pepper told us, they've voluntold us, their word, his word, not mine, voluntold us that we're going to test the third graders this year. P.S. We understand they may not even tell the parents the scores. So um, there, there is an effort to wake up folks around 
the country and around the state. Uh, the other document that you have there is double-sided. The Morris County Board of Freeholders passed a resolution against, against Common Core, against the imposition of it about, two, about a month ago. There are four other counties, Bergen County, Warren, C. Morris, Hunterton, I think Cape May have passed resolutions against it. So it's kind of, it's catching on in New Jersey. And the reason I mention that is on December 2nd, um, one of the ladies in the state who's kind of a guru on, um, on Common Core is coming to speak to us in East Hanover. And if you get our Morris Patriots emails, um, it will give you, you should have gotten a notice about it, we'll give you another one. Um, uh, meeting at 7 o'clock, um, I write opposite Novartis in a little strip mall there, and I'd invite you to come. And the reason I mention it, I know you're not school board members, but the, the, the impact on taxes certainly affects the municipality as a whole. And one of the things about this is that the, the testing is all done by computers. So districts have to purchase all this computer hardware. The costs for New Jersey, I don't know, was it 64 million they were given or something? I can't even remember the figure, but it's not going to totally cover it. And so it's projected that there will be more costs. It will be very costly to do the testing which is much more frequent than current testing. So anyway, if you read that one document, there's a, more information than you, than you need to know about it, and you, you'll probably want to know about it. But um, this is, you know, just like Obamacare, where big brother and big government knows what's good for you, and if you ask parents and school board members across the nation, not a whole lot of them even know that this is going on. But it's being implemented as we speak. So if, if you read that and, and, and you'd like, you know, to have a conversation, I'd be glad to, to do that. And please come on December 2nd. I'll send you that notice. Um, the third thing is I was in Trenton today, and um, kind of uh, if, if I if seem a little, if, I feel a little stressed. I felt like my head wanted to explode down there today. I was down to listen. I tried to testify on the um, bill to grant illegal aliens, I don't like that word, undocumented students, uh, in-state tuition. If you recall, that came before the County College of Morris a year and a half ago, and the residents of Morris County didn't think it was too good an idea, and the County College changed their mind. Well, now they, this decision from the state will be forced on them. Our governor has indicated about the middle of October that he might be inclined to sign this bill now. He wasn't before, but things are getting better in New Jersey. Can't say that I've noticed that, but he seems to think so. And he's kind of telegraphing that he might sign it. Um, of course, he's running for higher office, and he might be looking to attract certain voters that normally he might not attract, or no, the Republican you, Party you might you not attract. You don't believe that. Do you? No, no, of course not. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't, do know that he got 20% of the black vote, and I don't know, was it 34 of the Hispanic vote, or, or whatever. You know, I mean, he got minorities, 55% of women, whatever. He got minorities that Republicans frequently don't get, not that he would want to try to appeal to them if he's going to run for national office. 15 other states in the nation grant in-state tuition for a but that leaves 35 that don't. I think if he's running for higher office, he might not be a smart thing to do. But I would, I didn't get to testify. I'm sure it was a coincidence. But, you know, when I put down that I was opposed to it, they trotted up one person after another, after another, after another, went on and on and on about how wonderful this idea is. And you just sit there and you think, you know, the voice of those who pay and, and, and don't get all these freebies that government is giving us. They're not here because they're home working. And I called a number of people like, could you go down? We want to come down with me. You know, they're, they're all busy. They're all working. So, you know, just if you haven't experienced, if you haven't had the pleasure of sitting at a Trenton hearing, probably you have under something for municipal reasons. Mm. Yeah, really ought to try it sometime. Your head wants to explode. And uh, it just, you know, it all falls under, all of these fall under the umbrella of <coughs> big government is telling us what to do, from planning and zoning at the state level to COA. I mean, I'm not going to go into that anymore, but I'm right on board with, I guess my common thought out of all of this is how much of this, how much more do we put up with as citizens, your citizens as well as elected people? before we stand up and say, you know what, we're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> what does it take for us to stand up and say, we're not building that COA housing? 
We're not implementing Common Core. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. We do, it's not good for our town. It's not good for our people. We're not doing it. We need to come up with a strategy other than saying, yeah, we really don't want to do this, but the government's making us do it. We've, been, we've done that for decades. Where has it gotten us in this country? We're at a point where our country's in, like, practically in collapse. How much longer can we go on spending? What's going to happen to our children, our grandchildren? Is it going to be the free country that it was when we were born? I don't think so. Well, Barb, I, I, so, I hear you. I I, think the, I, it's a big rhetorical question. I don't have, you know, I'm sure you don't have an answer. I don't expect you to have an answer. Well, we're a municipal but, body. I, I think as such, uh, you know, clearly those in elected office on, on this body have been, uh, you know, elected here for their, hopefully their, their viewpoints, be it liberal or conservative or whatever, and we're here. Uh, it's difficult for us to take a political position as a municipal body. Um, I mean, obviously, we're... Uh, well, you're not nonpartisan. Our, 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 expe mean, our expectation is, is uh, public's expectation uh, from us is, uh, is for the common good of, uh, of all of Hanover Township, period, on the municipal level. But uh, uh, I, I, think, I think we share the same concerns over um, the, the heaviness of uh, government. I think we share the same concerns about the erosion of, of home rule. Mm -hmm. I think the governor's moves toward certain things, uh, and again, I, I don't want to d d take a lot of the committee's time on debating it, but uh, on even an education of more regionalization on education, I think is a dangerous area for, for us. Uh, it may save some dollars where administration is concerned, school boards are concerned, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, I, I don't know that. Uh, for Hanover, at least, Hanover is at a disadvantage. Uh, we've got uh, wonderful good control over benefits. We've got wonderful good control over our costs. We've got wonderful good control over the fact that we have no debt, et cetera, et cetera. And when we talk shared services and we talk about merging services, et cetera, we're usually <laughs> taking on somebody else's liability. And, and I, I'm not one for that, for, um, unless it is something we've done it successfully with, uh, with our health department, where we share nursing service, et cetera. But we could go on for quite a while. I don't right. want to take the committee's time. But, right. but in any event, we'll take your information uh, into consideration, and, and I'm sure the committee will discuss it. And if there's something that we should be doing, and if it's even uh, contacting or uh, corresponding with our legislators, assembly, state senate, et cetera, we'll be happy to do that. But uh, uh, that's what we—that's the limits of where we can possibly right. go for now. Well, all is impact financially on us. I mean, if it's even if though it's an education issue, for example, yep. if it impacts the taxpayers of Hanover Township, it ultimately has you know uh, bleeds over into into township. There's only so much pot of money that people have to spend on taxes in New Jersey, and we know they're already leaving. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the uh, Common Core thing um, would be great if you felt so inclined to pass a resolution against it. If you'd like to uh, have a little bit more information, I'd be glad to sit and talk with any of you about it. Um, that would probably be helpful. Um, encourage uh, other folks you know in other places around the state, other municipal officials to pay attention to some of these things. Some of them are kind of under the radar, and so I won't take any more of your time. But, you know, the common denominator is all of these things are costing residents of New Jersey and Hanover Township more money because fact, the government says, you got to do it. Well, you know what? There's a time to stand up and say, no, we're not doing it anymore. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public like to be heard at this time? Hearing none? Seeing none. Two, three, four. Motion to close. So moved. moved. Motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Administrator? Okay. Uh, we have the approval of township committee meetings, uh, regular meeting minutes, August 8th, September 26th, October 10th, and October 24th, and the big committee meeting of November the 12th. May we have a motion for so approval? Moved. So moved. Second. By Mr. Fermaska. Seconded by Mr. Bruno. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramaska, Mr. Bruno, Aye. and Mr. Franciola. Aye. So approved. We have several letter recommendations for payment on projects from the township engineer. First is a second partial payment on the resurfacing of Crestview Terrace, Hilltop Circle, Hilltop Parkway, and a portion of Jeffrey Trail. 
to Stanziel Construction, located in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Total amount due $205,955.64. A first partial payment also to Stanziel Construction on the resurfacing of Brantford Road, Fisher Place, <coughs> Sherry Lane, and Lewis Street. Total amount due $26,159.48. A first partial payment on the resurfacing of Juniper Drive, Grist Mill Road, and Cranberry Court to Stanziel Construction. Total amount due $67,982.37. And finally, the resurfacing of Warren Street, a uh, first partial payment to Stanziel Construction in the amount of $97,986.08. The following uh, reports have been filed by department heads with the Business Administrative Township Clerk. They include the report of the Chief of Police for all activities uh, and uh, programs conducted by the department during the month of October. We have the report of the Township's Human Resource Specialist on all activities conducted during the month of October. Uh, the Township Engineer has submitted two reports dated October 24th and November 14th on various uh, construction projects and other projects performed by the department. The township's chief municipal finance officer serving as the treasurer has submitted his report on uh, the summary of budget revenues as of October 17th. Our um, Property Maintenance Officer has submitted two reports dated uh, October 21st and November 14th. And uh, finally, the Superintendent of the Public Works, uh, Buildings and Grounds and Park Maintenance Department has submitted his reports on all the activities conducted by the department during the month of October. All those reports are available for public inspection. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next order of business <clears throat> deals with uh, docketed ordinance number 32-13. This is a uh, ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 166 of the code entitled Land Use and Development Legislation by Amending the Regulations for the WC Center Zone District. We have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the October 17th issue of the daily record. And we'll also note for the record that the ordinance was filed as required by the Municipal Land Use Law with the Morris County Department of Planning and Development. All contiguous municipalities received a copy of the ordinance upon introduction. And finally, in uh, accordance with the Municipal Land Use Law, the reference and recommendation of the ordinance to the Planning Board and we have a letter from the Planning Board Chairman uh, indicating in part, and I'll read this into the record, that although Ordinance 32-13 as introduced is consistent with the Master Plan, the Planning Board recommends that the ordinance be amended to require construction of the housing development envision envisioned in the plan and in the ordinance as part of the planned commercial development permitted in the zone in order to be consistent with the housing element of the master plan, which provides for nine, af nine affordable housing units from the plan development. The board reads Ordinance 32-13 as permitting such housing as an option, but not as a requirement, which was not the board's intention when it recommended the introduction of the ordinance. Signed, Robert Nardone, on behalf of the planning board. I'm going to motion that we table um, the reading of this ordinance uh, simply because we do not have a quorum to vote on it at this point. So, I'll second the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Bruno. Is there a specific date that the ordinance and the public hearing then would be uh, tabled to? It uh, would be carried to the, the Monday, no, November 25th at 8.30 p.m. That's the Monday before Thanksgiving recess. Okay. So on the motion by Mr. Fermoska and seconded by Mr. Bruno mm -hmm. to uh, carry the ordinance to the uh, Monday, 
November 25th Township Committee meeting. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. And Mr. Franciola. Aye on the carry. And so to carry. Mr. Giorgio, just yes, for the sir. record, I believe that uh, uh, Committeeman Schleifer and Mayor Francioli were going to recuse, but I advised them um, if this was just for administrative purposes this evening, there's what's known as the doctrine of necessity. You need to take some type of action this evening, and that would be just to administratively move the ordinance to the next date. Then under those uh, circumstances, it would be very limited that they could participate, um, just for the record. Thank Understood. You. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Samra. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. on page two of your agenda, we have resolutions as a consent agenda. Are there any questions from members of the governing body concerning resolutions A through H? Hearing none, may we have a motion to approve the consent agenda of the resolution. So moved. So moved by Mr. Bruno, seconded by Mr. Francioli. And roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramosca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. We have also two raffle applications, 2697 and 2698, the Interfaith Food Pantry. And may we have a motion to move those two raffle applications as a consent agenda? So moved. So moved by Mr. Second. Schleifer. Seconded by Mr. Bruno. And roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramosca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, on payment of bills, $10,644,429.90. Oh, we have a motion we pay the bills, Joe. We okay. have a motion by Committee Man Schleifer to I'll pay our bills. I'll second that. It's second a good idea. Seconded by Committee Man Faramosca. I thank you. On roll call, Mr. Schleifer. Aye. Mr. Faramosca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, so members of the Township Committee. That clears the agenda of the Business Administrator, Township Clerk, and I thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, at this juncture, are there any other comments uh, from the Township Committee? Yes. Um, from a planning standpoint, um, planning passed what's called a connectivity plan. And this is a very, very positive um, initiative on the part of planning. Uh, it established what we would call a master trail system, a north-south and east-west trail system throughout Hanover Township that will uh, support pedestrian as well as bicycles. Um, I really want to commend uh, Ms. Linfante, who took the leadership on this, worked it, uh, it's formed a task force uh, supported by Mr. Pinadella and representatives of planning, uh, Mr. Steiger from Open Space, uh, and Mr. Coyley from the Recreation Department, all work collectively to advance this so that the vision will someday realize the ability to, to go use a trail system that would connect the northern, southern, east-western portions of Hanover Township. The first part to be tackled will be the area from um, Bayer to um, the area which is known as Crossings, uh, Crossings which is Jefferson Road and, and Park Avenue. Um, with this um, plan in place, um, the next step will be aggressive <coughs> pursuit of grant money. Um, to try to fund this, so hopefully Barbara will be able to get back some of this open space money to support us in regards to establishment of the trails for the members of our community. That concludes my report. Thank you, John. And uh, the uh, connectivity plan is something uh, most of us will know as Patriot's Path. And uh, what uh, Township has done in uh, with the help of uh, people that uh, John just mentioned in conjunction with an outside firm is not only did we improve on the Patriots path but we added to it significantly throughout the township so that uh, once this is implemented once it's created uh, we'll have the benefit of bicycling uh, you know jogging exercising walking through etc uh, it's a benefit not only to our residents it's a benefit to our corporate neighbors a part of wellness programs that they want, that they desire. It just makes us more attractive to them in the long run. I think it's going to be a, a, a great benefit to the township, so we're looking forward to it. Bobby, you got anything? Two things, if I may. The um, Recreation Commission is in desperate need of dial-a-ride volunteers. If anyone is able to help our seniors and those who need rides, whether it's through shopping or the doctor or wherever they may need to go, we had... Um, 
two of our volunteers um, had to resign somewhat unexpectedly and left us a little shorthanded. So if you are able to help and you know, or you know anyone who may be able to help, please contact the Recreation Department just as soon as possible, even if it's only a half day. Um, we can use volunteers you know, pretty much throughout the week um, or even on the weekend if you are available um, or if you know anyone who is available. And Saturday, there's a fundraiser going on at the Rec Center to benefit the Agoria uh, Children's Hospital over at Morristown Memorial. Um, very worthwhile event uh, for those who are sick, unable to pay for their care, etc. A lot of games going on, so you can bring the children, the, the grandchildren. And the uh, highlight is a helicopter will be landing over at Veterans Field at 2 o'clock. So exciting stuff for all our <laughs> pilots. Um, and again, if you have an opportunity to stop by, lots of good stuff going on at the rec center on Saturday. Sounds good. That's it for me. That's good. I think this is the second time we did that event. I think they have the... Uh, it's becoming an annual event, yes. It's an annual event now? Yeah. Went good. Very well asked. That's time. good. It's great. And the kids love that helicopter, I'll tell you. The helicopter is amazing. It's, medevac. It's, 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 a, it's a medevac unit. Hot right? stuff. A full up medevac unit. I right. think that Member Schleifer and I should have an opportunity to we should fly take it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... There you go. Part, part and parcel to it. I'm not sure we're still current with helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> Any other business from the Township Committee? Hearing none. I'm going to, once again, open the public, open to the public. Motion to open. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor again is open. If you'd like to address the Township Committee at this time, please do so from the podium. Name and address for the record. Jim Neidhart, 3414 Appleton Way. Um, I just have a question on two items that uh, I saw appearing on the conference meeting uh, agenda for today. Um, I was curious if there was any update on the uh, status on the Whippany Road and Parsippany Road intersection other than the legal stuff that you cannot talk about. Uh, to, to, the, to the degree I can share with you, uh, there has been significant progress. Uh, you're, you're talking about the uh, potential improvement of uh, Normalization. Whippany Road and Parsippany Road and uh, Bayer Boulevard. Is that what you're... Yes, particularly referring the to the normalization plan. Yeah, of the intersection. Uh, we are we are uh, uh, moving very successfully uh, toward completion of all the negotiations that we have to do there. There are a lot of other pro property owners that have been notified, including uh, OLM Church for uh, some widenings that will take place from that bank side down through the church. Uh, the quick check on the other side has been so notified. I guess, Fred, what other mm -hmm. comment can I make on that? Right, uh, right. Been no, we're, we're not going to displace any of those property owners, but, but there is, like you said, Mayor, just a road wide, widening and a yeah. small uh, portion of land may be needed to, to achieve that for the safety of the public. Is the uh, beginning of the ramp uh, on, the, I guess you'd call it, Whippany Road eastbound, uh, is that how far back does that start? Is that going to start just at the Bay of Boulevard, or is the breakaway going to start significantly back from the current Bay of Boulevard? When you say ramp, Jim, what, what do you? The jug handle, the big jug handle that's going to come and feed onto Parsippany Road. Jug right when you're when you're traveling right now towards the Quick Check on yeah. Whippany Road, yeah. where the backup is. Yeah. Right now, you have to make a, a left-hand turn from the left hand from the left lane. Right. From my understanding of the drawings that were presented, it's now going to be a right hand, or a, a, a jug handle. A jug handle through from the ne right hand, and that comes around. Negative. No. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Um, no, um, that. Um, that why that are you taking the house? <laughs> uh -huh. I thought the hat. That was the reason for the house on the yeah. drawing. The hat that was going to go around and. Uh, th those properties are, are a part of a, of, a, of a greater scheme of improvement, uh, and um, Bayer Boulevard will be lined up with Parsippany Road, and that second traffic light that we despise uh, will be gone, and uh, the traffic movement uh, will be controlled by a series of signals at the, at the key intersection of what we'll now call Boulevard Road, uh, Bayer Boulevard, uh, Parsippany Road, and Whippany Road. So it'll be a traditional T, yeah, and right. all of the turns will be traditional left lane turns? So they're, they're conceivably, and, and again, I think the county has to work this out with us, but it's conceivable that it'll be a dedicated left-hand turn, a signal for left-hand turn, 
Uh, and um, right now we've got the signals timed so that they default to Whippany Road, so that on, if there's no Bayer traffic that wants to come out, that light defaults to Whippany Road. Seems to be, so far, seems to be working out so far. But I think the, the grander improvement as part of our circulation plan will be this T that we're talking about uh, and the removal of that light, and I think we're all looking forward to that. I think that's, that's where we are with that one. Okay, thank you. I, I misunderstood the drawing. I had a different recollection. It's a good, of the it's drawing. A good idea, though. But uh, <laughs> you know, but okay. I, I think we. I, I think uh, you know, right now, uh, right now, the alignment is key. Of, of uh, not only not only uh, not only the alignment so far as where all those roads meet, but the reason we're taking some property on the Parsippany Road side that goes down toward the post office in the river is that we have to align that Parsippany Road properly with the Bayer Boulevard too so that we don't have any issues and confusion on that. But that's okay. all, it's all happening and thanks to uh, council over here who's working diligently on this, uh, it seems to be happening at a faster pace now, it's good. Okay. The other question I had is an item that I, I saw for the first time on any of our agendas, uh, number five, uh, digital sign town hall. Is there anything you can say about that? Oh, uh, yeah, what, what, what that is, uh, I had put that on and I, I haven't had an opportunity to discuss it with the township committee yet. Um, but uh, uh, what I'd like the committee to, matter of fact, thank you, you'll save me an agenda item if I talk about it now, I don't have to talk about it later. Um, uh, I would like the township committee to consider, and I have our township engineer looking into the cost, similar to what we have over at Whippany Park High School, a digital sign for this, this corner of uh, Route 10 and, uh, and Jefferson, where we generally put up our cloth signs right now for our uh, concerts and everything. But if we did a, a properly done digital sign, landscape properly, um, you know, um, handsomely done, it, it would be lit. Uh, digitally, so day and night would have visibility, and it could be by computer change for different events in the town, different notifications in the town, even so far as traffic control situations in the town should we need it. So it, it's my hope that the township committee will give consideration to doing something like that. Okay. Um, I, th I thought that's what it was about, and conceptually I'd like to say that I, I fully support the concept. I'm very glad that you mentioned the Whippany Park sign, and uh, because in saying it, you said similar to the Whippany Park sign. I was on the Board of Education when that sign went through, yeah. and I think that sign is the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Size and I'll let, me, let me tell you why. Um, I think the last meeting I spoke up here about uh, the percentage of people in our town that are senior citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an extremely large amount of people. And most of the seniors, including some of us almost seniors, uh, don't see like we did when we were younger. And that particular sign there uh, at Whippany Park, one, the letters are way, way too small to be read by anybody even sitting at the traffic light there. Yep. So if you think that somebody cannot see it just a few feet back at the traffic light, the chances of being able to see it and read anything, uh, I don't know that anybody over the age of 50 has ever read anything that's been on that sign. The second thing, it's done with red LCD or LED type of lighting, yeah. which is the worst. So I would just ask that when you do it, Besides considering something that's aesthetically pleasing and can provide the number of lines and the number of words that can, you know, get the message across, that you have an expert uh, that comes in that uh, knows what they're doing that makes it so that it really is readable to the population here in town so that it, one, isn't dangerous from a safety standpoint uh, because people trying to read it as they're driving, yep. uh, as well as, you know, if it's, if, if it's done, it should be done the right way so that it effectively accomplishes the objective. The Whippany I, Park I, one is terrible. I was 100% against it. 
I was, I believe, the only one at the time that spoke against it, and, you know, that was totally politically incorrect. Oh, my God, the sign and... Uh, Central Park, to take a look at the sign and read all, all five concerts that he's got up there, I'm good. If I can see those, I, it, can't, it can't be done. I, I wasn't it able to. It can't be done. So I, I can't agree with you more. Uh, now, I've talked to uh, uh, Mayor Andish of Mount Arlington, who's a friend of ours as well. They, they just did it. They put one up. I'm going to go take a good peek at it. It's got to be legible. It's got to be legible for the speed you're going to be traveling on Route 10 over here and Jefferson Road. Uh, it's got to be legible from a lighting standpoint, whether it's LEDs or other type of crystals that, that can be seen easily day and night in the sunshine, whatever. Um, all those right reasons. So I, I do agree with you, and I think uh, our engineer will start the process of looking into it. We, we've asked him to start uh, putting some numbers together so I can talk intelligently to the committee. So see Thank what you. we can do with it. Thank you. Good. And the, the third question I have on that same agenda, and I hate to ask this question. Um, I thought this was gone forever, but uh, number four in the legal section, proposed sign regulations. I'm not interested in the legal discussion, right? but I'm just curious if that is uh, coming back to life and why and what that's about? We, we, are, we are sensitive to a couple of things here, that we have the right uh, for political signs, etc., uh, and that right is going to be preserved, obviously protected under First Amendment, etc. But we're trying, the, the difficulty is trying to separate out what we call the clutter. Um, you know, we buy junk cars. Uh, we'll sell your house in 24 hours. Um, horseback riding, you know, so-and-so in this one, right? Uh, there are a myriad of these things, pop kickboxing. What the hell is that anyway? Um, you know, there are all of these signs all over our town. And, um, and quite honestly, uh, we're objecting to this form of, quote, advertising, um, you know, on the streets and right-of-ways. It's, it's a... We consider it, as a township committee, I assume I speak for all of us, a blight of something, and some towns have regulations. Uh, uh, we'll have to take a look at those closely, but we're going to breathe some life back into it and try and be equitable to everybody concerned. Okay. I yeah. look forward to Thanks. seeing and debating that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jim. Anyone else like to be heard at this time? <clears throat> Len, how you been? Len Fariello. Been Good. Um, good. And I uh, was proud to hear all of the positions you laid out tonight. Thank you. I was really proud of the committee and, um, yeah, proud to be Hanover Township president. Um, I understand you're going to, you table the ordinance, and shucks, that's why I came out tonight to speak about <laughs> Whippany <laughs> Village uh, and Whippany Center. I'm intimately familiar with the first one that we defeated, the second one, that we passed, the amendment, and now this. Um, but also the agenda says that we're going to defeat, or the planner is recommending you defeat this ordinance and reintroduce another one. Um, is, can you share what the difference is and what you're going to re reintroduce? Or? Yeah, you, you want to speak to that? You want me to speak to that? Yeah, the the um, the, the issue. Number of, number of units. Yeah, there's, there's lots. There's lots of issues with Whitney Village. The first issue is Whippany Village. The nice thing is CVS was built was built well. <clears throat> it was built with architectural design. It looks good, uh, and it's working out very well. It's probably one of their most productive units which they have. Second thing, which is very positive, is that we have a Chase Bank, which is a upstanding addition to our community. From there on, not so much. Um, the blighted condition. It's not as apparent as it used to be, but we still have a number of issues that we need to accomplish. And one of the issues that we need to accomplish is that we need to maintain the viability of property owners' rights. And property owners' rights, which we want to maintain the viability of their land, is the fire company. Um, what we do with this ordinance can have direct negative impact upon the fire company. So we have to be very careful as to how we adjust the ordinance to maintain their rights so that they want to clearly move to a safer area so they're not exposed to all the flooded conditions for all the right reasons, all the right reasons. Um, in addition 
to that, we have, you know, the benefit of what took place with CVS, the benefit of what took place mm -hmm. with um, Chase Bank, but we have this obligation uh, from the state in terms of COA and how are we going to deal with that. So it's, you know, we have to address how we're going to deal with that. There's a number of ways to deal with that. The ordinance, which we didn't vote on tonight, which we motioned to table, um, wasn't ready to do that. It had some weak links in it, one of which it didn't spell out properly enough what needed to be more of what I would call the requirement as opposed to an understanding. And that's very important, especially when we're dealing with these developers, that it's not just an understanding, but it's a requirement. It's in writing. It's specific. It's defined. There's terms around it so that it would be very, very difficult for them to wiggle out of it. Um, so there are a number of issues that our planner, Mr. Branchow, is working on optimizing at the moment. Um, I think it's got to come back to the committee. The committee's got to discuss it again and determine what is the best strategy, looking at what's right for Hanover, right. what's right for um, to protect the rights of the property owner, of which we all have vested interest in supporting uh, the property rights of, of um, the fire company, obviously. Um, so that, that's the reason why. Okay, so you're going to, uh, just so I can understand, you're going to defeat the current one that I had comments on. and We plan on that. And, and okay, because... Uh, we plan on that. All right, because um, I would want to speak on it after I read the new ordinance, because sure. I had a lot of comments on the ordinance mm. that was up for adoption tonight. That's so. Fair. And I might add that I think one of this developer's uh, motive operandi might be to try to keep the property looking blighted. I mean, there's not a lot of greenery. And I think we should, um, I mean, I watched what happened at Bear Stearns, and they did a lot of construction, but it's all green again. And, and, and the property... It's going to stay that way. Yes, and the property over mm. in Whippany Village has still got a lot of dirt piles and things. So... Um, well, he's, he's been, uh, I don't want to speak to it because I'm going to refrain from speaking to it because of my involvement with Whippany Fire Company. But, but I can speak to this. Um, until we do something by ordinance to straighten it out, no party can move forward. Not, not him, and you're speaking about Whippany Village LLC, and, and not the fire company. So that, that's, that's... Yeah, but not even what, planting grass? Hmm? Not even planting grass? Uh, well, yeah, I get, you know what? We, we had to twist his arm to get him to cut the darn grass in the front, if you remember, for a while while yeah. he was doing the Chase Bank. But thank God we got the Chase Bank and that cleaned that up. But the back now, with the soil and everything, I'm sorry, sitting there, you know, anticipating that he's going to do something. But, uh, you know, I... Well, if, that's if a maintenance issue, and I think... Um, I mean, we can get property maintenance down there. Yeah, because... I mean, I think that's part of what's motivating everything. Besides, I know we want to fill it with, um, you know, commercial rateables. Right. Um, I'm opposed to the residential element of it, but I'll speak to that at, at another mm -hmm. time. But I think that just having that eyesore, it's just, you know, probably motivating a lot of movement on this property. And, and I think that that should be addressed. Yeah. And, I, again, uh, even, even uh, members of the planning board, etc., have, have been aggravated by this property and its lack of movement. And uh, as our planner knows, he's been wrestling with trying to get something together. Uh, there's been a lot of problems in it with, with rezoning this thing or taking something yes. out of what we call a plan unit development. And I won't speak to housing or not. You will, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, we finally arrived at that, I think, with this new ordinance, and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to unlock the gates so that we can get going and, and, and get this project done. That's, that was, I guess, the sentiment of it. Well, uh, I heard COA being brought up, and I, and I agree with everybody that came up here and, and talked about COA, and also you. Um, you know, we have the tail wagging the take, dog take, here. Take note of that. Yes, take note of that. <laughs> Lenny agreed with me. <laughs> I, I do. 
And, you know, I mean, we're, we're constantly... We don't always disagree. We, we don't, don't always, always disagree. disagree. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the COA issue is a big issue for our town. I, you know, I remember when we cleared all these three sites, Hanover Hills and the one by OLM and... and um, Sunrise, Oak, Oak Ridge, was, Sunrise, uh, right, that Hanover was our Hills, first I, can, I can name them all, sat through it all. And then yeah. it just keeps going and going. I mean, we satisfy it and then it keeps going more. We, we, and, ne and we it, never satisfy it. They always, we, they always that's throw correct. the carrot out a little further. You yeah. Know, every time we, we, th we think we're there, we get a new, uh, under this round three, is, as our planner knows, we get a new allocation and under our housing plan, the state looks at us through magnifying glasses, and we've got to we've got to sh demonstrate to them how we're going to distribute their their new allocation in our township. You know, that, so yeah, you, and we can't be motivated with all these zone changes to try to satisfy COA. We have to do what's best for our town, and and then we could figure out the COA component. But I I just I see it working the other way around. I mean, we're just mm -hmm. everything is COA 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 and. You know, when I sat up there, we had the same issues, and well, you know, a, a, a lot of it. Again, I, I don't want to uh, get into lengthy debate, but you and I know that a lot of the statistics that that have been thrown at us mutually thrown at us uh, are numbers that we've had for 30 years. I mean, when when some of our our residents stand up and and say we're overdeveloped because we just put in 1,408 uh, units, uh, you know, rental units, etc., in this town. And uh, you know, to the to the to the person who's sitting in here who maybe hasn't been following anything, that would blow me out of my chair. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you did it back then, 16 to one with five developments, right? And we did it 30 years ago, and we have not had issues or problems, etc. I'm not defending it or not defending it, but we did what we had to do because at that time, that was the, it was inclusionary. And, uh, and it was thought at that time that was the only way we could possibly meet the, the requirement was to have market units and that. But, but my point is, look at it from a few years ago to now and, and, uh, and what our, what our, our build-out has been versus what we had to do back then where we had, we had to hit in the face with five of these things, you know, but in any event. Yeah, that's well, my, the more we my, build, the more color we cents. need, but I don't think that... Um, Maybe we, like what Barbara said, we should just say we're not going to do it anymore. I, Lenny, show me the way, I'll follow you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to tell you, I, I can't agree, and I think everyone on this board agrees. Uh, this COA, it's, it, we spend more time in planning, and I've been in planning a ton of years, so you were involved in planning. I think we, I can safely say we probably spend better than 50% of our time wrestling with COA regs and, and COA uh, satisfaction than we do with the damn site plan yeah. itself. You know? yep. The most unfortunate thing is, who is it helping? Is it helping the people in well, need? Is it doing is the it mission? Helping, is it helping the people in Hanover Township? I can't say it, it's achieving its goal, but you know, when I looked at it in terms of when we could transfer rights and we could, we could sell these and we could really make a difference and improve impoverished neighborhoods and elevate those neighborhoods, then we're seeing real benefits to people. Real benefits to people that they improve their standards, their quality of life, real benefits to people where they could get onto public transportation so they could get to work. That works. Well, people with greater wisdom than the individuals sitting here tonight and this collective group in this room decided that no, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you where we want and how many we want and when we want them. Yeah. It's not greater Well, it's a noble idea, but it's just not working. Yeah. Thank you. I, I haven't seen the, the fruits of it, I'll tell you that. Uh, anyone else like to be heard at this time? Can I ask one more question? Oh, Jim, go ahead, sure. <clears throat> Jim Nido, 3414 Appleton Way. Uh, as you know, I live in the Eden Lane complex, which has low and moderate uh, units. And I will say that Although the people that live in those units are a, sl a somewhat lower socioeconomic class yeah, of sure. people, it's obvious. It's not a you know it's not a comment. It's just kind of a fact. Um, there are relatively few issues. Um, you know they don't follow the rules quite as well as everybody else. And but I will say that it by having inclusion, which doesn't always sound like a great thing, everybody keeps each other honest. 
uh, and it, it hasn't worked out all that bad. Um, that, that's the trade-off, Jim. Yeah. The trade-off is when you have market units inclusion with your affordables that you are keeping each other honest. That's yeah. a good word. Somebody keeps uh, you're the watching, eye on each other. You're, yeah. you're watching each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, As opposed you know, to isolating it and then problems develop. Having, having a, a third party then have to come in and control it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. My, my main reason for coming up again was to ask a question. Uh, my understanding is that in nine years from now, uh, those low and moderate uh, units will become full market <coughs> units, meaning that those people can then sell those units at whatever the market rate is, as opposed to having a cap of maybe a 3% profit from what they paid for it. I'm not exactly sure of the numbers. Um, and at the same time, the community association can raise their maintenance fees up to full fee. Mm -hmm. So what there's, a, we, there's another option, but go ahead. Well, I'd love to know about that uh, after I finish. Township can use its uh, its right to purchase those L and M's to make to keep them L and M. Blaze, am I on the right path? On, on those that come back on the market, can we we can acquire them? Yeah, actually, the way it works is the person who sells it at market rate, they have an affordable unit. They sell it as a market rate unit. The town gets 95% of the profit that they would realize. They mm -hmm. only get 5% of the profit. The town can use that 95% of the it's money like it's other affordables. to either purchase other units, keep them affordable. The somebody, town get doesn't somebody lose Somebody down it. in Trenton yeah. thought of everything. Okay, because I don't think those residents know. I think that they think, oh, it goes market value. We can hold on to it till then and it's then. It's not going to be a windfall for them. Okay, I don't think they know that. Um, <laughs> but my, 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 my main reason for bringing it up was to say if they did go market value, then what happens to our COA requirement? Then all of a sudden do we have to build it someplace else? And I think Blaze answered that, it, it and I think I know what we were inclined it, to do. It, based it, doesn't, on. it doesn't increase they our give obligation. It, but they don't take it away. Yeah. Yeah. So if I, had a, if I had to make a prediction, I would predict that those are going to stay market uh, uh, low and moderate income no, units you, for a long you, time? If you zoned for them and they stayed that way for the 30 years, you don't lose that credit. All right? Oh. All right, so we won't lose the credit if we don't make them or keep them affordable. If we do keep them affordable, we'll be able to renew that credit and get credit twice. Oh. And by that I mean is the obligation in the first round, those were satisfying that. Right. If at the end of the 30 years we renew that 30-year affordability mm -hmm. requirement, we'll get credit against the fourth round obligation without having to build a new unit. It sounds like that may not be a bad option That's to look into. That's a very good idea if we can do it. Okay. Thank you very there, much. There are some options. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Jim. Anyone else like to be heard at this time? Barbara, you got four minutes. I know. No. Starting no, now. Real quick. <laughs> um, just, just clarification on the governor. Um, I, I, when he was elected, didn't he go to the court and throw out COA? But obviously he didn't. Can you, I mean, I just, maybe you guys know better. So you probably do that. Didn't he? He tried to fix it. Wasn't that a goal when he ran? And something happened with the court, but I, yep. where are we? Court superseded. Yeah. Uh, the, the courts came back, uh, the uh, uh, Supreme Court came back with a decision that the governor now has a, I'm going to call this a five-month requiem in, in this thing, where, whereby at the end of which he has to come up with some suggestions as how he's going to satisfy uh, the court's concerns that COA is not strong enough. I think that's... Yeah, that's the court nice. said the, the governor can't undo a legislative act, which was the Fair Housing Act, and they also said it's a constitutional obligation and even the legislature can't undo that. So, either way, we appear to be stuck with it. The governor did try, though, uh, unsuccessfully. The court also made a nice sidebar comment that I took umbrage with that I don't even think was appropriate and that is that if you're a town that could build a shopping mall well then you dang well can put affordable housing in. So, so that the people who work in the mall can afford know, to live in the town that they're ridiculous. working in. That was <clears throat> okay, thanks. And then even, thank you Barbara. Um, okay, gentlemen, motion to close. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Motion for adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Very good. Adjourn. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, everyone.
you doing? 